I'm Andrei Ruchlevsky. Uh, I'm a research assistant in Advanced Reactor and Fuel Cycles Group, led by Professor Huff, uh, University of Illinois. Uh, I guess everybody quite sleep, sleepy after lunch, so I try not to bore you too much with my uh, talk about our recent toll development for modeling molten salt nuclear reactors. So there is our dream team. There is our PI, Katie Huff. So if you met her somewhere, uh, don't hesitate to say hi because she's awesome and always open for collaboration. So why advanced reactor and fuel cycles? It's actually quite different topics, but in our group we believe that it's quite coupled. Uh, why? Because uh, to implement some new fuel cycles, we need to change reactor's design. And vice versa, to uh, implement some new concepts of advanced reactors, we, we are often have to change fuel cycle concept. And of course, we need rewarders and uh, any supercomputers to make it possible. So basics nuclear fission. Uh, we have heavy atom, usually it's uranium, 233, 235, plutonium, there's a few options. Uh, when it's absorbed neutron, uh, there is probability that fission can happen. And after fission, we have two unequal atoms and two or three neutrons. Usually we have reactor ch uh, fission chain, but uh, for nuclear reactors, we don't want this kind of behavior because it's more like a nuclear device, nuclear bomb. So for nuclear reactors, we wanted to keep reactor exactly critical. What does it mean? It means that number of neutrons in the next generation should be exactly equal number of neutrons in a previous uh, generation. It's very important because, you know, all this work related with that. So that's basically how <laughs> nuclear power plant work. So I would say that it's very fancy and highly scientific way to boil water. So uh, we just boil <laughs> heat up water in a core and generate steam in steam generator which rotate our turbine to generate electricity. So there is conventional uh, nuclear power plant with a, a modern uh, nuclear reactor. Uh, in modern nuclear reactor, we have solid fuel. Usually it's ura uranium dioxide, which is in a, a zirconium rod and it's stationary. It's located in the core and, we, and it doesn't move. So uh, placed here for usually uh, 18 or 24 months and then we just replace it. Molten sun reactors are quite different. In molten sun reactors, we don't have solid fuel at all. Our fuel is uh, dissolved in a coolant. Coolant is not the water, obviously, because we cannot dissolve uranium in the water, but it's a mix of some uh, salts. And we can dissolve uranium or plutonium in um, this coolant. So uh, why it's better than uh, light water reactors, which we employ right now. Uh, because we can achieve really high temperature of coolant. With water, we cannot do that, obviously, because pressure should be very high to obtain even 400 Celsius. Uh, we can fuel it with a different type of uh, fuel. So it could be uranium-5, 3, thorium, or uranium-plutonium. It's very important, you can imagine, uh, that, for example, your car could be fueled with a gas, diesel, wood chops, and something else, coal, for example. Of course, that's uh, give you advantage in economical scale because, for example, if gas gas prices is high, you can just buy wood chips or something like that. So it's very important. Uh, it has in increased inherent safety. So let's uh, remember Fukushima, where we lost all our electric sources, and we not we we wasn't be able to cool our fuel. In this case, it's impossible because we, in case of emergency, we have freeze plug here. So if temperature rises uh, higher than some value, it just uh, drain in the, the uh, tanks where it's subcritical. So it's going to be critical in this uh, tanks. And moreover, uh, we try to do this uh, tanks so that it's possible to naturally remove all decay heat. So we don't need any source of energy to cool it. And uh, also because we uh, can, uh, without stopping this reactor, we can 
uh, removing or adding some uh, isotopes or materials, there is really high fuel utilization. So we generate like order of magnitude less nuclear waste. But of course, there's a lot of challenges to model this type of reactor and we have to model it carefully before try to build it. So for conventional uh, light water reactors, we have only this part. So we have only uh, two coupled physics. There is neutronics, which is neutron. We have to estimate neutron flux. Then we can estimate fusion. And then based on this information, we can uh, say what is, would be heat uh, generation in the fuel, uh, determine temperature, and then there is coupling. So we, uh, our density changes and our nuclear data also changes. So we all only can uh, two-way coupling here. But in case on a molten salt reactor, uh, we have to take into account the late neutrons. What does it mean? Uh, after fusion happens, we have two unequal, as I said before, uh, atoms, which is radioactive usually. And some of them can emit a neutron, not immediately, not promptly, like in a uh, case of fusion, but after that. And time could be like few milliseconds or even one minute. So in case of solid fuel, we know that these delayed neutrons will be emitted exactly in the place where fission taking place. But in case of liquid fuel, which is uh, circulating in the primary loop, it can emit neutrons in the pipe or in a heat exchanger or in some place in the core. So to take it into account, we have to simulate this part. So we have to take into account fuel motion. Our goals for uh, two years research was develop two tools to uh, help simulate uh, high fidelity uh, level models of molten salt reactors. Uh, first tool is salt proc, which is tool uh, for depletion simulation, so neutronics depletion simulation. And is a multi physics tool called Moltres. Uh, in all we want uh, what I mentioned before. This codes for ability uh molten salt bridge reactor and his fuel cycle. Okay, and uh, for multi-physics software, we want to demonstrate the viability of this software uh, in a 2D axisymmetric and 3D cases. <sighs> so there is a uh, first part of this work. Uh, so there is model neutron neutronics model of a molten salt bridge reactor. Uh, the yellow part is a fuel salt. And blue is our moderator, which is graphite in this case. As you can see, the geometry is quite irregular, especially with these corners. And uh, the full core is more even irregular. So we have one type of cells here, another type here, and a different type here. So it's impossible to simulate those reactors with just using some simplified geometry like unit cell. So we have to do the full core model. That's why we actually need blue waters, because this full core model created in uh, Monte Carlo code, so it utilizes enormous computational power. So for example, on my workstation, it's like a few days to run uh, on a blue waters couple minutes for like f uh, 4,000 uh, cores, I guess. So yeah, here I want to em emphasize that we have irregular geometry. So that's why we have to create huge model use Monte Carlo and use a lot of computational power. So there's a structure of Salproc tool. Uh, it's actually built on the top of Serpent Monte Carlo code, uh, but Serpent Monte Carlo code and all conventional uh, physics codes cannot treat fuel movement and cannot treat fuel reprocessing, uh, namely adding some isotopes or removing it. So this tool actually make it possible to run uh, the Monte Carlo code with some time step. Uh, we use in this work three days step, but it could be 20 seconds or a couple minutes, doesn't matter. 
and after each step it utilizes uh, uh, some uh, logic of removing uh, materials and adding materials. Obviously, adding materials we wanted to add some fresh fuel. For removing materials, we want to remove something that's bad in core, so it's strong absorbers for poisons. And also, uh, we want to store, so we want to tally all this information in HDF5 database, and it's kind of important to make this part, because if we have only two minutes for one depletion step, and then we have like 30 seconds to store it, it's a waste of time, so we want to accelerate it. So we want to do this uh, part as fast as possible. So second part related with the uh, multi-physics uh, application. Uh, in this uh, part of work, we use uh, Muse framework, which is a, a framework uh, able to solve uh, as many as possible equations using a finite element method. Uh, and it's fully coupled, fully implicit solver. It's a massive parallel, so uh, maximum run was like 100,000 scores, I guess. Um, and it um, uses two um, known libraries, libmesh, which is called used to uh, domain decomposition. So domain decomposition uh, is uh, automatic, but if user want to specify this, it, uh, he can do that. Uh, and for solving actually residuals and Jacobians, it uses a parallel PETC library to solve uh, nonlinear equations. <coughs> so we're b about results. So re there is a multiplication factor for uh, online reprocessing simulation in this case. We simulated for 20 years, about 20 years. And as you can see, uh, it starts with a quite high uh, criticality, but then it's stabilized and we call it uh, the state equilibrium state. What does it mean? It does mean that after a few years of operation, uh, atomic density of major isotopes, which we're interested for, doesn't change in this reactor anymore. So it's an equilibrium state and we can uh, analyze uh, economical or few cell performance usually in this state. So we're interested to do that in this state. Uh, we also estimate uh, power density for this type of reactor. As you can see, obviously, the most of fission uh, happens in a center of reactor. But uh, the interesting part is that we are also breeding uh, fissile material. So this type of reactor consumes less fissile material, uranium-233 in this case, than it produces. And the major part of this uh, production happens actually on the uh, outer surface of our core, uh, where uh, power d density is actually small. That's why we have to use full core model. Otherwise, if we simulate, for example, only this one cell, uh, it gives uh, unreal unreliable results for us. And there's another uh, different uh, interesting finding. So there's a thorium refill rate. So it's thorium uh, fuel reactor. And uh, I think most of them <laughs> finding is that that uh, thorium consumption for this type of reactor is only 100 grams uh, per gigawatt hour electric. Uh, I ran some numbers. If you want to use coal for this, it would be about 400 tons. And there is the results of our multi-physics simulation. Uh, there is fast uh, and there is thermal spectrum. There is axisymmetrical model symmetrical case, so uh, we have uh, fuel salt moving from the bottom to the top, and as you can see, the most of fission happens again in the center. And there is temperature results. Uh, we have cold uh, salt in the bottom and hot salt in the top. And there is demonstration uh, 3D case. Uh, we used a uh, cuboid molten salt reactor experiment uh, model uh, because we have some experimental data for this type of reactor. Thank you, uh, Oak Ridge National Laboratory. Um, and again, as you can see, uh, fast spectrum is, uh, fast uh, flux is a maximum in the center of this model, and temperature is highest in the top of the channels. Uh, to conclude, uh, so we have developed uh, 
two tools, saltproc tools, which uh, allow us in the future uh, simulate and analyze uh, fuel performance for liquid uh, fuel at molten salt reactors. Uh, we tested it uh, on a molten salt breeder reactor conceptual design and verified it against uh, most recent Oak National Laboratory studies. Uh, but they use unit cell models and deterministic codes. But we had a nice agreement with them. Uh, and interesting finding that uh, thorium uh, consumption is only 100 grams per gigawatt hour electric. And second tool is the Moltres, uh, which is a uh, simulate couple physics in molten salt reactors using a MUSE uh, framework. We demonstrate the capabilities of Moltres uh, for 2D axisymmetric and 3D uh, cases. We also did some uh, strong parallel scaling for this code. Unfortunately, it's <coughs> not very good, only uh, we tried it for like 1,000 cores, but only for 400 cores, it's strongly <coughs> parallel, but I guess just further optimization needed. And overall, we up, uh, utilize up to all, almost six, 60,000 node hours on blue waters. Our future work, uh, we try to use these tools for transatomic uh, molten salt reactor. It's quite new concept, recently uh, developed, and we get actually funding for this already. So uh, I think we need at least 100 uh, thousand node hours to uh, done this work. And we want to see, uh, is it possible to transmute fuel from conventional uh, nuclear reactors in a molten salt reactor. And we also want to explore some uh, transit safety cases uh, using motors. And I want to uh, say thank you, INSF, for uh, Blue Waters allocation and all these companies and people who help with this work.